Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Rockat Sin Pro Air. This is an interesting offering from Rockat, which is a combination of Rockat's design with Turtle Beach's sound, because Turtle Beach has recently acquired Rockat, and so now the two are merging their technologies together with an interesting end result. This is a wireless gaming headset which interestingly offers immersive 3d sound superhuman sound settings waves 3d audio technology that interesting honeycomb rgb lighting that rocket seems to be a fan of lately and a number of other highlights now this is an unboxing video and i'm going to talk to you about what my experience has been like with this headset and show off what's included in the box and talk to you about a number of things of interest. I have mixed feelings about this headset, and I'm going to explain why. I'm also going to record a sample at the end to show you what the microphone capture quality is like, and talk to you about the immersive audio settings, because something like the superhuman hearing, for example, is interesting if you're interested in sound horroring and getting the upper hand on enemies by being able to hear footsteps and sounds like guns reloading and other things because that is mainly what this headset's designed to do it also comes with an interesting setup which includes up to 24 hours of battery life a usb a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle with a usb c adaption dongle which is interesting for some reasons that i'll tell you about in a minute a detachable TrueSpeak microphone, which I'll show you the quality of later, and a USB-C charging cable. Now this has fast charging capabilities. You can get five hours of battery life in 15 minutes. And as I said, up to 24 hours battery life, depending on how much RGB lighting you're using. And that is interesting. This headset is also one of a few different devices that runs with Rockat's Neo software, which is different from the Rockat Swarm software that you usually see. So they've released a new bit of software specifically for this headset and a couple of other devices, including the Rockat Torch, which is a standalone microphone. So there's a lot of interesting things going on here. The first thing I was struck by was the design of the ear cups and the sort of pivoting of that. So it has a lay flat design so you can fold it up and transport it well. But it also has, as you can see, very deep ear cups. A bit more on those later on. But I have found that they're nice and deep and large. Now this headset weighs in at 390 grams. So it's designed to be sort of semi-lightweight and comfortable and sit on your head nicely. But one of the things that I've found is the clamping force is a bit of an issue. I'll talk to you a bit more about that and show you what I mean later on. As I said, you have a detachable microphone which has this bendy goodness to it, so you can move it around quite easily. It's also flipped to mute. This is quite unusual to see a flipped to mute mic that you can also take off. So you can take it off if you want to, and you can use the included bung to just cover the hole where it would normally plug in. So if you're like me and you have a standalone microphone, you'd prefer to use that, and you don't need to use the mic on the headset, which is pretty nice. And that obviously gives you options in terms of what you're doing. As I'm showing you this as well, you'll also note there's a honeycomb inner bit here and a bit more on that in a minute, but that lets the RGB lighting showing through. So like the Rockat Cone Pro Air mice, this headset is designed with sort of RGB lighting hidden under the shell with a lightweight honeycomb design protected by the outer layer. And you'll see that flip to mute functionality there. There's a noticeable click that you can feel, a really tactile sort of feedback in where it clicks up, so where it's muted. So you certainly know when it is muted. Other things that you'll notice here is a sort of thick padding on the headband and the ear cup. This is an athletic moisture wicking fabric is what they call it, which is essentially sort of rough textured fabric, but it is nicely padded with memory foam cushioning on the headband on the ear cup. So I've certainly not found it uncomfortable from the padding functionality. Now a little bit a, about the dongle. So you have the option to plug in a USB-A dongle to your PC, but you can also plug it into this USB-C adapter. So if you've got a USB-C port, you can plug that in on your PC and you're basically connecting the USB-A dongle. This is a 2.4 gigahertz wireless dongle that's meant to give you a decent connection. But what I found unfortunately is the range on it is a real mixed bag. I've had some intermittent problems where 
Sometimes I'll wander out of the room to get a drink and it will just disconnect really quickly and easily. And other times it performs OK. But one thing that I have found interesting is if you plug that USB-A dongle into the USB-C adapter, you can plug it into an Android phone and then you can use it this way. So you can have wireless connectivity. So it's not got Bluetooth in the headset, but you can use the dongle to plug it into your phone and listen to music, which is a nice little hidden feature of it and something that I really like. It's nice to see this as an extra option. However, unfortunately, the range isn't that great. And I found that when I'm walking away from like a PC, it disconnects. And then when you come back, you have to wait for it to reconnect. And there's a delay, which is a pain. One of the things I do like, though, is the USB-C charging, which is ridiculously fast. And you can literally see it charging up within the software. But it also charges up really quickly, which is really nifty and really nice to have that fast charge. So you don't have to worry about being plugged in constantly. And if you are suddenly running low on juice, you can really get some extra charge quite quickly. Now you can see some more of the RGB lighting. So it has Rockat's AMO RGB set up. So you've got this organic lighting and it's just a little subtle bit at the back on the side with just this honeycomb set up for the RGB. And you also have a little LED indicator to let you know how much battery life you've got. So you'll flash to let you know when it's getting low. So. There's not much going on in terms of controls, but what you will notice is there's two volume wheels, one on either ear cup. Now, the reason for this is one of those volume wheels controls the overall volume and the other one controls the mic monitoring. So if you choose to use the detachable microphone with this headset, you can adjust how much of your own voice you hear by rolling the wheel on the right ear cup. So you can either have it so you don't hear anything at all, or you can hear it a little bit, or you can hear lots of it, and you can basically adjust between those. This is worth having, because although these ear cups aren't faux leather, and they don't block out all external noise, they do actually block out a fair amount, and that's partly because they're quite deep ear cups, and so they cover the ears really well. I found them deep and large, and good for blocking out a lot of external noise, but what that does mean is if you are using a different microphone, that isn't attached to the headset and you haven't got mic monitoring in any way, then you will find that you end up shouting. Unfortunately, there's no 3.5 mil option with the headset, which means you can't plug it into an external mic for mic monitoring purposes, but you can still use the microphone and connect that and then use the side tone on it to be able to hear your own voice. Now, a bit more about the ear cups. As I said, these are designed with a moisture wicking technology designed to keep your ears cool. So although they're large and deep, they won't make your ears particularly hot. However, I will say that I don't really like them. I find them scratchy and uncomfortable, and they're not as soft as something like on the Corsair HS80 or the Astro A50, for example. They're nowhere near as nice as faux leather. They don't block out as much noise as faux leather and they're just not as soft. They do have some good memory foam cushioning though, so they are large, and they also don't have a massive amount of clamping force. And I'll show you why this is a problem in a minute, but this is gonna vary depending on what your personal preference is. But what you can see is there's a lot of padding here. Another thing that I found is that it doesn't seem to be possible to remove these. I've pulled, I've twisted, I've tugged, and I can't seem to get the ear cups off, whether the whole thing comes away or just the covering, it doesn't seem to be possible. But you do have some good cushioning there, and that same cushioning and that same material goes through to the headband, which means you get a nice bit of padding on top, and I've certainly not found it uncomfortable from sitting on my head. And it's kind of lightweight at 390 grams, so it's not particularly obnoxious or problematic. Where this headset shines is in the audio, and there's a lot of customization that you can do in the audio, so I'm gonna show you that in a minute. I'm also quickly gonna show you a mic test and talk about the clamping force a little bit. So stick with me to hear the mic and more. Here I am with the Rockat Sin Pro Air on my head, and I'm using it obviously without any wires, connected wirelessly to my PC using the USB-C dongle. What you'll notice is the microphone's quite compressed. Another thing that I've noticed is it also picks up plosives, especially if you push it closer to your mouth, so you can really hear that, unfortunately. And there's no windshield to deal with that. One of the things that I do like is the mic monitoring setting, so you can roll that mouse, roll that wheel on the back to hear more or less of yourself really easily. So that's obviously very handy for doing voiceovers like this, but it also seems to be loud enough to capture some pretty good quality, but it's certainly not as good as a standalone microphone. You can also adjust settings within the Rocket Neon software in terms of the sound and 
highlights of that so you can improve it. While I have this on my head, I also want to demonstrate a, another problem with this headset, and that is the clamping force, because it is a loose fitting headset, very loose fitting. And one of the things I found is if I bend over occasionally, it's not doing it now typically, but it just falls off. And you can see it has the ear cups have sort of adjusted from just where they were. And if you just move your head around too fast, it just flies off. And yeah, you're unlikely to flick your head around quite that much. But I found like multiple times I've just bent over to look down at the floor, look down at my dog, for example, just coming into the room and that's just fallen clean off my head, which is obviously not, not ideal. And if you're quite a, a gamer that likes to move around a lot when you're gaming, you're looking at the screen in different directions, or you just be really animated, then you probably will find that quite problematic. And uh, it's one of the loosest fitting headsets I've tried. And yet, it also has this nice twist and tilt in the ear cups, so you can really adjust the ear cups into a good, comfortable position. And they do sit nicely over the ear and block out a fair amount of external noise. But the headset is just too loose fitting for me, which is quite frustrating. Now I'm going to dive into the Rocket Neon software and show you what you can do in that. And here we are within the Rocket Neon software. So you can see you've got some basic settings on here and you're basically just diving into the headset. And you'll notice there are a number of different things and options in here. Uh, for example, you have a superhuman hearing and you can enable that and then change it so you can hear the difference between footsteps and gunshots. You also have 3D audio settings. This is using Waves technology, so it's quite good, but what it does is quite a big change to the sound settings. And you will also note that you can't actually go between these various ones. So if I activate the game spatializer, for example, that deactivates the 3D audio. And so it's sort of balancing out between them. You have a channel mix where you can basically hear more of the game and more of yourself. And you also have a thing that you can en enhance the game dialogue. You also have a noise gate threshold, so that's obviously applied that way, and you can change that and adjust that audio there. Now, it's worth talking about what differences these make. The superhuman hearing technology I've heard before with Turtle Beach headsets, and essentially what that does is it sort of washes out a lot of the sound from the game. In layman's terms and general experience basically it makes the game audio sound a lot more hollow what you're hearing is not as rich as what the game usually would sound like but what it does is it emphasizes the sound of things like footsteps and guns reloading enemy movement and it allows you to position that audio a lot easier so it enhances the virtual surround sound and the positional audio to give you audible cues where the enemy are and this is actually very effective i have used this in rainbow six siege for example to hear the footsteps of enemies and where they're moving and then to get the upper hand on them and beat them at uh, their own game of trying to sneak up on me and it's been pretty effective i found it is decent and it's done a good job of that as well so it's really enjoyable for that reason but it does really take a lot of the sort of quality of the sound away so you'll find that the sound becomes very hollow 3d audio obviously gives you that positional sound uh, again i feel like this washes it out a little bit i actually feel like on default settings the headset's a little bit better but this is going to be a personal preference i think you really need to play around with these settings in terms of the game spatializer and the 3d audio obviously you have the option to go into game mode or music or movies depending on what you're doing i found the headset to be really good for listening to music and watching films good quality audio great sound and a really rich sound experience to it and obviously having all these customization options gives you a lot of flexibility in what you can do but it's really going to be a personal sort of preference in there now you can go into the equalizer settings and you can also adjust the eq here so you can tweak things you'll see it's, it's fairly basic as is the illumination settings so you have an option to just change the lighting 
on the ear cups, the RGB lighting, or you can just set it to AMO, which is the intelligent lighting. And to be fair, Rockat's AMO intelligent lighting system is really nice, gives some really nice RGB lighting. But I don't really understand the point in RGB lighting on a headset because you're not going to see it most of the time anyway. So it seems kind of pointless. But you can turn it off if you don't want to use it. If you want to save battery life and you aren't bothered about it, then you can do that. And there are obviously effects as well. It's fairly minimal. The main controls is going to be the 3D audio superhuman hearing. Sadly, there's no buttons on the headset to change between these settings. So you have to sort of alt tab out of your game in order to do that, which seems a bit lackluster and a bit disappointing because it does mean when you initially get the headset and you're trying to work out which sound works for you, you're going to have to quickly alt tab out of the game try out a different sound setting, adjust it, and then see which works and which one you prefer and just keep doing that. And it's a bit of a hassle and obviously it's not great, but maybe this will change in the future. This is new software, so they'll probably update it and change it over time, hopefully improve it. But it is nice to have all these different options. And if you do focus on enemy footsteps and want to get the upper hand, then this may well be the way to do it. This has been the Provoke Prawn. I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.